years ago, out in Linthicum Heights, Maryland, Grant Wilson was living the good life. He ran away from his family, from his father, Slade, and he didn't plan on looking back. He ran into a group of young adults of similar minds, outcasts, they called themselves, and quickly made friends with each of them. Apparently, the group formed an informal think tank specializing in gene therapy, physics, and pharmaceuticals. Grant learned that his new friends were subsidized, meaning everything from their rent to their equipment was already paid for. They were kind of like social media influencers, except they worked for the Hive organization. The organization was founded by some of the greatest minds on the planet in order to create the world's greatest hive mind of thinkers. Grant's new friends are but one of dozens of cells they've created to help solve the world's problems. They're practically superheroes. Almost a year passes and Grant finds himself strapped down on a medical bed. He attempts to cast aside any last minute regrets he may have had as a syringe full of a strange liquid is entered into his veins. His friends assure him that after the procedure he will be a whole new man. And that is exactly what the masters need. Hive needs a herald, a powerful warrior, like Grant's idol, Deathstroke. Only Grant will be even better, stronger, acting covertly for the greater good. Currently, Deathstroke is racing through the hills of Vermont. He accidentally overshoots his target and runs into the Ravager, knocking his son, the makeshift mercenary, off his feet. It happens so fast, Ravager believes it to be some kind of trick formed by the Titans. Deathstroke runs back and slides to a halt kicking up dirt in the process, before telling Ravager, No, son. Think of this as a time out. I'd like you to reevaluate your commitment to Hive. Deathstroke's new icon suit looks just different enough from his original armor that it takes Ravager a second to realize who's standing in front of him. Wait, I know you, he says before slowly approaching Deathstroke and unexpectedly hugging him. Deathstroke, he then cheers. I've read about you on the dark web. You're amazing. I can't believe it. I'm hanging out with Deathstroke. Can I... Wow, this is such a fanboy question. Ravager removes his helmet. But will you sign my mask? Grant, Deathstroke sighs. Wow, you know my name? Deathstroke knows my name. Deathstroke then removes his own helmet so that he can look his son in the eyes. Of course I know your name. I gave it to you. Grant sees his father's face and immediately rejects it, reasoning this all 
really must be a trick from the Titans. Sadly, he's wrong. Slade regrettably tells Grant Hive is just using him to recruit Deathstroke. But Slade never wanted this life for Grant, for any of his children. Grant begins to stomp away. Get back here, son, Slade barks. Oh, hell no. I will not accept this. In his rage, Grant draws his sword and holds it up to his father. You don't get to call me that. You've never earned that. Calm down. You calm down. Grant, there are things in life between fathers and sons. Shut up, you maniac. I have power now. An energy dampening field, enhanced strength and reflexes. The boy you knew is long gone, Slade. Replaced by the Ravager. Slade hits his son with his helmet knocking Grant out and sending him crashing to the floor. Crap, Slade huffs. Didn't go any better than my first two attempts. The kids got a cement block for a brain. Got to go back farther through the time stream. I'll get it right next time. In the present day, the Titans and the Teen Titans are flooding out of the sewers under the Garden State Medical Center in Jersey City. Nightwing tells the team the Flash has asked them to meet at their old headquarters at Hatton Corners. Everyone begins to cram into the jet, but Robin puts his foot down and demands Kid Flash be left behind. Even Tempest, the former Aqualad, agrees. This situation is Wally's fault, and every second Deathstroke has super speed could literally mean the end of everything. Raven, Starfire, and Beast Boy each speak up in protest, but there are more pressing matters to entertain at the moment. Beast Boy repeatedly makes it known to Nightwing that both the Titans and the Teen Titans are in over their heads. They should be calling the Justice League. A lunatic is planning to change time. He may have already done so. They are talking about the fate of all reality here. Beast Boy argues, how bad do things have to get before they admit they're in over their heads? What exactly is Nightwing trying to prove? And if things weren't bad enough, they not only left Kid Flash, but they also left Jackson. It doesn't take long for the heroes to reach Goat Island. Hatton Corners lies just across the bay. Nightwing explains Grant Wilson, Deathstroke's son, died just over a hill not too far away. At that moment, Jericho arrives as well. His voice echoes through each of their ears. And I miss Grant every day of my life. Who are you? Nightwing asks, alarmed. Jericho gives the teams an innocent wave and introduces himself as Grant Wilson's brother and Deathstroke's other son. He explains, What you are hearing is my subvocal processor broadcast over your team's calm frequency. By the end of Jericho's sentence, the Flash arrives. He 
however, is not too eager to see his teammates. He still feels shame from his last encounter with the assassin. Elsewhere, the young Wally West is running in the rain towards the closest payphone he can find. Jackson, who was also left, has been chasing him for blocks, but Wally has been ignoring Jackson's pleads for him to slow down. Even without his powers, Wally's still pretty quick. When he finally reaches the phone, Wally calls the only person he can think of, Barry Allen. Unfortunately, Barry doesn't answer. It's just another coincidence, Wally guesses. Barry's never really there when he needs him most. The voicemail Wally leaves is short. Hopefully, Barry will listen to it in time. Back at Hatton's Corner, the older Wally West is running in circles in an attempt to generate speed. Follow me, he tells Jericho. Try and keep up. Easier said than done, Jericho tells him. My icon suit is a gravity sheath, just like Pops. I'm fast, but not super fast. Just stay on me. Draft on my wake, the Flash advises. The way we traveled here from Los Angeles, Deathstroke combined Kid Flash's super speed and the gravitational properties of his uniform. We're trying to recreate Deathstroke's method, following the data he's collected. Jericho, however, has his apprehensions. Perhaps, following in his father's footsteps isn't the wisest of moves. Messing with time is risky. The Flash counters that he tried stopping Deathstroke by himself. They could lose the entire planet because of it. This time, they stick together. Nightwing organizes the assault. He explains how Jericho's gravity sheath and the Flash's speed are creating a time portal. This, paired with Starfire's energy as a stabilizer and Raven's chronokinesis, will help them reach their destination. But when they get there, they must stick to the woods and stay out of sight, above all, to avoid any contact with their past selves. Even a small change in the timeline could be disastrous. Of course, things never go as planned, and within the temporal tear, the heroes run into past variants of themselves. They meet a Dick Grayson, who is still Robin, a Wally West, who is still Kid Flash, a Donna Troy, who is still Wonder Girl, a Roy Harper, before everything. Garth is still Aqualad, and a younger variant of Lilith Clay stands before them. Before anyone else can speak, Nightwing tries to explain to their younger selves that they mean them no harm, and the heroes are just looking for Deathstroke. Unfortunately for the heroes, this is before they met Deathstroke. The young ones have no idea who Nightwing is speaking of. Damien pushes Nightwing aside so that he can shake hands and speak to the past Robin himself. Just point us towards wherever Ravager went. The past Robin begins to explain that Ravager 
vanished. They were actually just about to pursue him when, out of nowhere, Damien turns to the past Kid Flash and hits him with a precise strike in his chest. Damien explains it to be the stone palm technique, a strike that causes commotio cordis, a disruption of heart rhythm. The past Wally folds to the ground and begins to convulse, and the older, present Wally begins to fade from existence. Before anyone else can react, Damien throws out a number of flash grenades as a distraction. His plan, he tells Nightwing, is to bring Deathstroke to them. Kid Flash only has to die for a second, just long enough to disrupt the history of the Flashes, which will obliquely alter the path of the other Kid Flash's history, enough to break his linkage with Deathstroke. Elsewhere, Slade Wilson is trying to make Grant see reason. All right, son. Enough of this foolishness. The serum I've used to give you powers is killing you, just as they planned. Get to the emergency room, or I'll drag you there. Grant throws his father's hands off him. I'm not going anywhere with you, jackass. It's too late now, Slade. You can't change the past. Suddenly, everything around Slade becomes distorted. No, he says to himself as he realizes. My speed power, the time stream, it's fading. Slade tries to cling to his timeline, but he is left to watch helplessly as Grant doubles over in pain. As his son begins to spit up blood. As his boy dies in his arms all over again.